If you think the Starship belly flop maneuver was the wildest thing SpaceX has ever attempted, hold on tight. Because the next evolution of Starship's atmospheric braking goes far beyond anything you've seen. And I'm not exaggerating. What SpaceX is working on now could fundamentally redefine how massive spacecraft return safely to Earth, land on the moon, or touch down on Mars. Today, we're going on a journey that starts with the chaotic elegance of the early prototypes and continues to cutting-edge innovations in controlled lift, banking maneuvers, and aerodynamic techniques that haven't been publicly revealed. Stick with me to the end because the final reveal, the maneuver that could change everything, will genuinely blow your mind. Let's start with the basics. Starship isn't just large, it's unprecedented in scale. Standing 165 feet tall and 30 feet in diameter, fully loaded with cargo or propellant, Starship can weigh upwards of 6 million pounds at liftoff. That's equivalent to over a thousand mid-sized cars. Even when empty, returning from orbit, the spacecraft still weighs roughly 200,000 pounds. The amount of payload Starship can carry is extraordinary, up to 100 tons, enough to transport entire lunar habitats, Mars rovers, or critical mission equipment in a single flight. And when it re-enters Earth's atmosphere, it does so at roughly 17,500 miles per hour, orbital velocity. To put that into perspective, that's over 25 times the speed of sound at sea level, and the kinetic energy involved is equivalent to hundreds of tons of TNT. The problem is obvious. A nose-first re-entry at that velocity would be catastrophic. Friction with air molecules would create plasma hotter than 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to melt or vaporize most conventional materials. The solution? The belly flop. By rotating the entire spacecraft sideways, Starship presents a massive drag surface, roughly 30 feet wide and 165 feet long, dramatically slowing the vehicle without relying solely on engines. The result is distributed heating, manageable deceleration, and a controlled path toward the landing site. Early prototypes, SN8, SN9, SN10, and SN15 demonstrated this principle brilliantly. Watching a stainless steel giant perform a belly flop and fire its raptors to flip upright for landing was awe-inspiring. But those tests also revealed limitations. At high angles of attack, airflow over the flaps became turbulent, leading to uneven heating. The transition into the flip burn required perfect timing. Even a minor delay could produce a hard landing or a fireball. SN10 famously landed, but exploded minutes later due to residual propellant issues. To handle full orbital re-entry, engineers had to go further. At Mach 25, around 17,500 miles per hour, atmospheric heating becomes extreme. Plasma envelops the spacecraft, shockwaves form, and forces exceed what the SN series prototypes experienced during low-altitude hops. The belly flop alone wasn't enough. SpaceX needed evolution, a system that could manage velocity, heat, and trajectory simultaneously, over hundreds of miles of descent. That evolution is now underway. SpaceX has quietly transformed the belly flop into dynamic atmospheric braking, combining variable orientations, controlled lift, banking maneuvers, and deployable surfaces. The flaps are no longer just for stability, they generate real lift. Starship now behaves like a lifting body, capable of steering across hundreds of miles to reduce peak heating, optimize landing footprint, and maintain control even in plasma-shrouded conditions. During recent orbital test flights, telemetry revealed Starship banking mid-descent like a giant hypersonic airplane, allowing it to shift energy loads gradually and reduce stress on both the vehicle and the heat shield. Another subtle evolution is the supersonic glide phase. At altitudes between 50,000 and 80,000 feet, Starship tilts slightly to generate horizontal lift, distributing thermal loads more evenly and preventing hotspots. Even traveling at Mach 10 to 12, roughly 7,500 to 9,000 miles per hour, Starship maintains maneuverability. Imagine controlling a 165-foot stainless steel spacecraft like a massive paper airplane, adjusting orientation to steer, slow down, and survive one of the most hostile environments in human history. But SpaceX isn't stopping there. 
engineers are exploring a partial angle of attack tilt, raising the nose 10 to 20 degrees during descent. This innovation increases drag while lowering stress on the heat shield. It redirects plasma to predetermined areas, letting engineers reinforce only the regions that experience maximum heating. On Mars, with an atmosphere just 1% the density of Earth's, this tilt could spell the difference between a soft landing and a high-speed crash. Future iterations may include deployable air brakes or variable geometry flaps, a concept akin to active aerodynamics in racing cars. These surfaces could massively increase drag during re-entry, shortening braking distance and reducing heating. On Earth, this might reduce landing speeds by hundreds of miles per hour. On Mars, these deployable systems could be critical for safely landing heavy payloads, habitats, fuel depots, and scientific equipment on Mars and the Moon reliably. No spacecraft in history has attempted aero braking at this scale in thin atmospheres. Hybrid techniques like propulsive aero braking are also in play. Starship can fire small thrusters during descent to adjust its arc, smooth turbulence, or correct for off-nominal conditions. These aren't full burns, they're micro-corrections, stabilizing the spacecraft during extreme heating, especially when plasma envelopes the hull at temperatures above 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Combining aerodynamic braking with controlled thrust gives Starship a safety margin no previous spacecraft had. And here comes the cliffhanger. Engineers have suggested a maneuver called the cross-body slip. Starship would yaw slightly sideways during descent, similar to fighter jets performing high alpha side slips. This technique would dramatically increase drag, reduce fuel needed for landing burns, and distribute heating over new surfaces. It hasn't been publicly demonstrated, but aerodynamic modeling suggests it's feasible. When SpaceX eventually performs it, the spaceflight community will likely be stunned. Understanding why this matters requires a perspective on reusability. Each advancement in Starship's atmospheric braking system moves humanity closer to fully reusable interplanetary transport. Safer, controlled descent allows Starship to land heavy payloads, habitats, fuel depots, and scientific equipment on Mars and the Moon reliably. It also makes orbital point-to-point -point Earth travel feasible, because controlled re-entry is essential for passenger safety. And for missions returning from lunar or Martian orbit, every improvement in braking reduces the propellant needed, cuts costs, and increases operational flexibility. Consider the numbers. Starship must decelerate from 17,500 miles per hour in just minutes during Earth re-entry. Aerodynamic flaps and lift vectoring surfaces can slow it by thousands of miles per hour before engine burns even begin. Banking and tilt maneuvers allow precise horizontal shifts of tens of miles, crucial for targeting landing zones. Thermal loads in plasma-rich re-entry zones can exceed 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but careful orientation spreads energy over thousands of square feet, preventing catastrophic hotspots. These calculations involve millions of joules of kinetic energy converted to heat and dissipated safely by the vehicle's design. Historically, Apollo capsules were safe but limited in capacity and reusability. The space shuttle had wings but required extensive refurbishment and could only carry small payloads relative to Starship. Starship's evolving braking system offers scale, flexibility, and reliability, making it the first vehicle in history capable of landing anywhere on multiple worlds, carrying heavy payloads, and returning repeatedly without extensive maintenance. Every element, supersonic glide, partial tilt, propulsive correction, deployable flaps, works together. They create a layered braking system capable of handling extreme velocities, unpredictable weather, and plasma interference. Starship is effectively learning to fly in the upper atmosphere while traveling faster than anything humans have controlled before. And if you've stayed with this video this far, you're part of a small group of spaceflight enthusiasts who truly appreciate these innovations. These maneuvers are not PR stunts, they're engineering at the edge of possibility. Hit the like button if you want to see more deep dives like this. Subscribe to Rocketry for detailed explanations of cutting-edge spaceflight, and follow Rocketry on Facebook for behind-the-scenes updates. Drop a comment and tell me which Starship braking mode excites you the most, belly flop, supersonic glide, partial tilt, or the rumored cross-body slip. I read every comment personally.
The future of Starship isn't just about reaching orbit, it's about returning safely, predictably, and affordably. Each evolution of its atmospheric braking system brings us closer to routine Mars and lunar missions, massive cargo deliveries, and eventually human colonization of other worlds. The belly flop was phase one. The next phase with lift, banking, tilt, and crossbody maneuvers could finally unlock humanity's interplanetary potential. And when SpaceX performs these maneuvers live, we'll be witnessing history, an engineering achievement on a scale never before seen in human spaceflight.